All right, guys, today I'm starting a new series of videos all focusing on discontinued fragrances. Today's video is all about why fragrances get discontinued, and I'm also offering up five of my favorite discontinued fragrances for you to find out about. Perhaps you don't know about them, perhaps you do know about them, perhaps you have backup bottles of them, but whatever, these are discontinued fragrances that I really, really love. There's more than five, but I'm gonna offer up five in this video. Stay tuned later today to learn that uh, the Bottega Veneta Parco Palladiano collection of fragrances has been discontinued. I'm doing a video on that whole entire collection. That will be video number two, and then tomorrow there'll be two more videos on two brands that have discontinued fragrances as well. So we're focusing on discontinued fragrances for the next couple of days. So if you wanna find out about discontinued fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Yes, discontinued fragrances. A lot of us complain about discontinued fragrances. I complain a lot about them, but there's a lot of fragrances that gets thrown out at us and then all of a sudden that gets pulled. And uh, I'm gonna let you know why fragrances get discontinued. Most of you probably already know, but this question does come up quite frequently on the channel. And I'm just gonna kind of go over three main reasons that I think fragrances get discontinued. And as I said, I have five fragrances that I'm speaking about today in this video that are discontinued that are my favorites. But as I said, also stick around till uh, a couple of hours from now where I'm going to discuss um, the Bottega Veneta Parco Palladiano collection of fragrances, which I just found out is discontinued. And of course, two more videos tomorrow. But before I get to the fragrances and the discussion on discontinued fragrances, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. Uh, let's start off this uh, video with a question. Do you have a favorite discontinued fragrance? If you do, put a comment down so I can find out what it is. And if if you have a list of uh, favorite discontinued fragrances, please, if you can, put a comment down. I'd like to find out what are your favorite discontinued fragrances. But why do fragrances get discontinued? Um, as I said, there's three uh, main reasons why they would get discontinued. I guess the most important one, the first one, is because it doesn't sell. For some reason, it's a flop. People don't get it, it doesn't click with an audience, and so it just, you know, doesn't sell and it doesn't produce numbers because nowadays uh, it's a, a conglomerates that are running the brands, the designers, most of them, and they're basically wanting um, numbers. And if they don't see the numbers, um, they're going to discontinue them because uh, it's, there's no point in keeping a fragrance that's costing them money that's not producing money. So I think that's one of the reasons, the most important reasons, I think, why a fragrance uh, gets discontinued. And there are flops out there and there are, you know, popular fragrances as well. And uh, the conglomerates, yeah, they want money. Uh, I mean, uh, you can kind of tell uh, from different brands what they're you know pulling and what they're selling and uh, if it's pulled it's because uh, number one reason is just nobody's really buying it and uh, that's why it would uh, have to be pulled so one of the reason one of the examples I'm going to give you is Maison Francis Kirkjian has a fragrance or had a fragrance called Absolute Pour Le Soir so that fragrance uh, was available selling at Neiman's early on in my fragrance journey, like in the early 2010s. In fact, I never bought a bottle, but I was gifted a nice size decant, and uh, I kept it, came back to it every once in a while. And then for some reason, it started reminding me of Mitza and Serge Lutin's uh, Ombre Sultan. So that's another reason why I didn't get it. But Later it was shelved and moved to a boutique exclusive at uh, the Maison Francis Kirkjian boutique. So I think since the takeover with LVMH, LVMH must have had, um, you know, a say in uh, what gets discontinued and what doesn't, most likely. And um, in 2019, when I went to 
the MFK Boutique. I did buy myself a bottle of Absolute Perlissoir, and I think early last year, just before the pandemic or around the pandemic, we found out that it was discontinued, no more selling. So uh, I don't think that fragrance is very popular. I think there is a cult following us in the fragrance community who love fragrances. Uh, probably we're the only ones buying it, so why would they keep a fragrance that's costing them money to produce uh, where they can actually focus on something a little more generic uh, like the aquas that just came out that uh, probably will sell a lot more than this kind of musky you know fuzzy amber fragrance so that's kind of one example I think I should offer up but I think the biggest biggest reason for, for a reason why a fragrance gets discontinued is because it just doesn't sell um, and it doesn't click with an audience. I guess one more that I think I should also bring up back in the 90s, there was a fragrance from Givenchy called uh, Insanse. I think that was a complete flop for Givenchy and it was pulled right away. It was a great set. I do have a vintage bottle. That's not one of the fragrances I'm going to feature today because I can't find my vintage bottle currently, but um, I do have one. But that's another, uh, f you know, it's a flop. It just doesn't click with people. Nobody's buying it, so they're not going to keep producing a fragrance that's not selling. In the end, they want to make money, and that's what this is all about. So anyway, that's that's number one reason. The number two reason I think that a fragrance would get discontinued is an ingredient that's being used in a perfume is getting very, very costly to produce. So when they release a fragrance, it has a price, right? And they've taken into consideration all the prices and costs involved to produce that fragrance. And all of a sudden, this ingredient just skyrockets up, you know, like the price just goes up. And then they decide, are they going to jack up the price of the fragrance as well? Might not work. So what they will decide is that uh, they're just going to discontinue the fragrance because it's not worth creating a fragrance that they're going to lose money on. Uh, and just to you know satisfy some fans it might have so number two reason would be because you know some of the ingredients just skyrocket in price it's it could be a number of reasons there's less supply of some ingredient um, there's uh, just I don't know, some taxes, I don't know, you, you know, there's different kinds of examples that would cause this and then all of a sudden that ingredient is costing way too much and now they have to, um, to uh, you know, kill the fragrance or discontinue it. The thing is, they could always go and get that ingredient from another supplier, but it's never going to smell the same. That is another conversation all on its own, but occasionally this does happen and people say god that fragrance smells so different now it's because probably this particular scenario did come up and they did go with another supplier and they added that same ingredient or note in there but the fragrance smells completely different so this is the reason why a, a fragrance would get discontinued so that they don't reformulate with this new supplier's ingredient and so to, 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 you know, to have the fragrance out there, but people complaining anyway because it no longer smells like it did. So that's one of the reasons why, number two, fragrances would get discontinued. And then the third reason why a fragrance would get discontinued is because IFRA is uh, putting a ban on certain ingredients or notes. This happens all the time. Um, I think oak moss was uh, one of the notes which I didn't feature in my favorite notes videos. I do enjoy this note, but I left that note off because it's, it's not really being widely used now. It's kind of banned everywhere. So uh, I, even though I enjoy that note, I don't can't buy a lot of fragrances nowadays with that particular note. Uh, unless now I think what they do is they might add like a minuscule amount of oak moss and they blend it with uh, patchouli is what I hear. And so, which is fine, I love patchouli. I just hope they never ban patchouli, for God's sake. That would be a nightmare. Perfume industry would just tank, I think, if patchouli was ever banned. But um, that's one of the reasons why I didn't include oak moss, but that's kind of why a lot of vintage fragrances that featured this note just kind of, you know, became discontinued because this note was no longer 
uh, legal or allowed to use, to be used. Uh, and this is all only um, fragrances that want to be certified under IFRA. There are a lot of indie brands here in the USA that don't go through IFRA, but the ones that want to, like the major brands, were discontinued, discontinuing fragrances because this note was being banned uh, or outlawed. Um, again, I don't have the technicalities of oak moss, but I think you can use a very minuscule amount of it if it hasn't changed. I do have a very lengthy video on the channel with Dana about oak moss and sheeper fragrances. Uh, it gets a lot of technical there if you want to go find that video. But that's kind of number the reason number three is if if we regular an ingredient or a note and you know the brand can't use it anymore so they can do the similar thing replace it with something else but that fragrance is going to smell so different and again it does happen this happens all the time um, the the IFRA regulations happen and I think from what I've read or heard is that they'll regulate a certain percentage even further and then so they have to like uh, you know fluctuate, remove the, a certain amount of a note that they're using in a, in a perfume and replace it with something else. And I think our noses are so smart, we can detect any changes in fragrances. So this does happen. Sadly, it's happening that way. But if it's a big, big, you know, you know, major note that's being banned, it's like, I don't think brands have a choice uh, but to con discontinue a fragrance because as I said if they put something new or replace it with another note it's going to smell different and we're really going to be able to tell the difference. Anyway those are the three different reasons why fragrances get discontinued. If you ever find out about a discontinued fragrance you know it's getting discontinued and you have the funds to buy a backup bottle or backup bottles of a fragrance that you really really love you should do it. I've done it and I still do it and um, yeah that's what this theme is about today and uh, the, the following video and then of course two more videos tomorrow of two different brands that are discontinuing uh, fragrances but anyway those are my thoughts those are the reasons number, the three top reasons why I think fragrances get discontinued uh, if you have any questions about this particular topic put a comment down so I can find out but if you have any additional info you want to offer up you can also put that down as well but let's move on to the discontinued fragrances that I really really love we're gonna go first with uh, Penhaligon's Ostara which came in this bottle. So this is a fragrance that was created by um, Bertrand de Chafoul, and this was one amazing smelling fragrance. Very, very unique, really amazing. And I don't understand why this particular fragrance was discontinued. It could have been a flop. Uh, I don't think people caught on to it. I can't remember why. But it was launched in 2015, and it was canned in 2017. I believe it was 2017. It could have been 2016. So I don't think it had a very long uh, shelf life. It, it came and went so quickly that I didn't even see it at the store that was selling it at that time, Saks, later at the Penhaligon's Boutique that opened up here, which later closed as well. So um, it was a flop. It's, it was either a flop or maybe a note in here was banned or something happened I don't know but most likely it's a flop because it doesn't smell it it smells amazing to me it smells like uh, Narcissus or um, you know this flower that you buy in the uh, springtime early spring these yellow flowers they're popular at grocery stores you get like a small bunch of it for like a dollar or dollar fifty uh, that's what it smells like to me and it's amazing I've turned this one on to so many people they've loved it and I think one of the reasons why this is amazing and some of my friends who I know like green fragrances like this because it has a major green quality so that's one of the reasons why I like this but along with that the Narcissus is king hyacinth is king here with notes of green leaves beeswax violet leaves Ylang Ylang Vanilla Juniper Berry. It's an amazing, amazing fragrance. I would, if this was a successful fragrance and it was still in production currently and it was selling, I would put this as my number one favorite Bertrand du Chafoul fragrance or creation. It's that good. It smells amazing. It's a unique smell. Um, it, it does capture that flower 
beautifully and then some because we have some additional notes in here. There are spicy touches that kind of remind me of carnation cloves in here, uh, but loads of flowers, but unique flowers, very spring smelling, but an intense kind of a smell which with pungent qualities, floral pungency is what I should say, but an amazing, amazing, amazing fragrance. It's sad that this one died really, really fast, but I think uh, Penhaligon's is owned by, or is owned, or was, or is, I think it's still owned by Pouj, and they're another company that's all about numbers, so they're going to, you know, release something, and if it doesn't stick, they're going to can it right away. So this one bit the dust really quickly, and it's, it's an amazing fragrance. absolutely love this one. Uh, as I said, I would rank that as a number one favorite fragrance of Bertrand de Shuffle. It, it, it just it smells fantastic. It, it, I love it. Okay, the next fragrance came out in 1990, and this is most likely, it, it's using a lot of oak moss, and it's most likely why it's discontinued, unless, I don't really know when exactly it did get the discontinuation, but oak moss's banning was either in the late 2000s or the early 2010s, I believe. So, this was a 1990 release, it's a men's fragrance, it's Balenciaga Pour Homme. Amazing fragrance. If you can get yourself a bottle, get it. But it does kind of uh, fit in. It's like kind of like a cousin of Zeno Davidoff. It's kind of along that line. And also I would throw in Guerlain's Heritage, which is not discontinued. But Balenciaga Pour Homme is a very, very sexy patchouli. On the slightly animalic side uh, fragrance, created by Gerard Anthony in 1990. And it features notes of cinnamon, patchouli, honey, oak moss, coriander, sandalwood, labdanum, cedar, and laurels. But uh, an amazing looking bottle. I only have a 30 ml. I should probably buy a larger bottle so I can use this. This smells amazing out of the bottle. And as I said, it's a 1990 release. It's um, 30 plus years old, but this smelling it out of the bottle smells great. I don't know exactly when it got the discontinuation, but damn, this is such a great fragrance. Again, it does remind me of uh, Guerlain's Heritage and also Zeno Davidoff, but it's its own unique thing. I think the patchouli in here is so over the top intense uh, and it's it's kind of like a bad boy kind of a fragrance and I love that about it so good Balenciaga Pour Homme I don't know too much of the details on this one because um, it's an older fragrance and I did not study it as much as I wanted to but uh, if you can get your hands on this one I highly recommend it it's uh, quite phenomenal. And that bottle right there, which I bought in early 2020 before the pandemic hit in San Diego at a perfume shop, it smells fantastic. So this next one, I think was launched initially as a limited edition and I thought it was here to stay. It's one of the very, very, you know, popular flankers from the Mugler Amen collection of fragrances. It's Ultra Zest, which came out in 2015. But you know, it just got discontinued and I was like, wow, for a, such a great fragrance, why are they discontinuing this particular fragrance? Because it's really a great quality take on Mugler's Amen. And in 2015, this was probably, along with uh, Pure Tonka, probably one of the best uh, flankers, last best flankers of this series because after that it kind of just went downhill for Mugler and now they're with L'Oreal. I don't even know what the hell they're going to do with this brand. But this, an amazing, amazing take on the Mugler patchouli DNA with blood oranges and a citrusy touch. You can kind of, you know, use this one during the summer uh, months and not be like choked with it even though as I, I always say there's no rules with it some of you have this kind of a thing about summer fragrances versus uh, winter fragrances this one I think it's kind of a uh, universal you can wear it all seasons and in the summertime it actually smelled even better because the patchouli in here and the coffee really amplified and contrasted beautifully with the citruses of the blood orange and the tangerine note in here this was created by Jacques Houclier who has pretty much created all the flankers for Mugler's Amen collection, but this one was a joint creation with Quinton Biche. He did, did he later create, um, I can't remember if he created uh, Pure Tonka, uh, but I know he created Angel Muse for Mugler, but this came out in 2015. Notes are blood oranges, tangerine, patchouli, coffee, cinnamon, ginger, vanilla, and tonka. And if you don't know much about the Mugler Amen DNA, they were basically 
taking and uh, picking and choosing notes from the original fragrance. And with this one, I think they added the blood oranges and the tangerine note because it wasn't in the initial release. I don't think it was. But they really, really did a great job with it. But either way, perhaps it wasn't working. Perhaps an ingredient got too expensive or banned. And so they canceled it or maybe just it was just a limited edition but a really really great limited edition i have this bottle and i have one halfway used so uh, i'm glad to have it because it's it really does smell great and it's probably one of the last remaining great releases from mugler uh next to pure tonka i don't think they've done much good with uh, with any of their men's fragrances a alien was okay, but I think the rest of the fragrances were just very, very disappointing. Anyway, all right, the next one I'm gonna to talk to you about, I haven't spoken much about on this channel, but this was such a great release when it came out. I absolutely love the contrast in this one. Amazing contrasts and amazing notes. This is created by Anique Minardo, along with Olivier Cresp in 2011 for the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier. This is Coco Rico. So this amazing smell, it was an amazing smell because I initially discovered Lidge, L'Instant de Guerlain Pour Homme Extreme, and that was so hard to get. A lot of people were recommending this fragrance as an alternative, and this was available at the discounters for so inexpensively. I think for around $30, $40 for a... 100 ml, I think this is 100, or 125 ml. So I had bought it, and I noticed a lot of differences with some similar notes. For me, this is a lot drier. Uh, it's got, uh, you know, kind of dry and slightly powdery, dusty notes in comparison to the syrupiness of Guerlain's L'Instant de Guerlain Pour Homme uh, Eau Extreme. But what was unique about this one and the contrasts here is the cacao patchouli contrasted with this kind of uh, green bitter fig leaf note and then you add the vetiver and cedar in here and you have a one beautiful creation. Two master perfumers created this and they did an amazing, amazing job. Really, really amazing. But in the end, I don't think it had the lingering power that Le Mal or Le Mail has had from the Jean-Paul Gaultier collection. So it was discontinued and canned. And I think in the current modern days, this, if it's launched today, I think it would flop. This to me nowadays is more like what a niche fragrance would be because it smells so different than all of the releases in the men's designer world. They smell all the same, the same. This is like very, very unique for a smell and I think it would flop, sorry to say, but our noses are getting dumber and dumber and we're enjoying less unique fragrances and familiarity is very king. That's why L'Oreal keeps cranking out fragrances that smell similar to one another. Like they've released the same fragrance from one brand to another to another. I mean, give me a break already. But yeah, this, this is so unique that I don't think fragrances like this will survive these days. And maybe because, you know, a note got, you know, banned or outlawed that's in here, or just, they just decided to discontinue it because it wasn't selling a lot. But to me, it's an amazing, amazing release. It smells fantastic and uh, I'm glad I have a bottle. I don't have the night version of this, but I have the original and I, I'm in love with this fragrance. It's just, it smells great. And the last fragrance I'm gonna to talk to you about, which came out in 2010, from the house of Van Cleef and Arpels, it's Midnight in Paris. So this was one of the darlings of the fragrance community in 2012 and before I started my first channel, uh, when I was watching other YouTubers and uh, people were, you know, bragging about how great this is. I always thought this was a unisex fragrance, but it wears like a unisex fra unisex fragrance. And a lot of people thought this was similar to, Mid uh, Mid not Midnight in Paris, because this is called Midnight in Paris, uh, to Bulgari Black, because that is a unisex targeted fragrance that's also created by the same perfumer of this one, Anique Minardo. This, on the other hand, is created by Olivier Polge along with Domitile Michelin Bertier. But a great, great cozy leathery tea fragrance. It smelled fantastic. I loved it. It had warm, spicy touches along with leather, tea. You have tonka beans, mate, benzoin, almonds, amber, and rosemary. So basically, I have half bottles of both the Eau de Parfum and the Eau de Toilette because there were two versions of this fragrance. And then I have backup bottles of both both of them, but I can't remember. One of them is 100. It could be 125 ml. One of them is 
a 75 ml, I think. I don't remember the sizes. I think these sizes are a little different than your traditional sizes, but it came with the most beautiful bottle and sadly it got discontinued around 2015, maybe 2016. And uh, I'm glad to have my bottle and it smells great. It's a great fall fragrance, I think. I love it. It does remind me a little bit of Bulgari Black. It also reminds me of Prada Luna Rosa Black a little bit. It has those kind of similar smells in there. Either way, sadly discontinued, but a great, great fragrance. Let me know if you're a fan of these five discontinued fragrances. I know I threw in a, a very unisex, if not feminine leaning fragrance here, but the rest of the fragrances are male targeted. Uh, but let me know if you're a fan of them. Let me know if you have backup bottles. Let me know which discontinued fragrances you uh, don't have that you wish you had, and also which ones you do have backup bottles of. I appreciate you tuning in today. Stay tuned for the Bottega Veneta Parco Palladiano fragrances video soon. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one, guys. Bye.